Good morning, everybody. Thanks for uh, taking a seat and uh, joining us this morning. Um, we're going to be presenting on the topic of uh, liquid compression molding and uh, uh, HPRTM. Uh, my name is Stephen Gradonis. I'm the, uh, the North American Business Development Manager for Automotive for Westlake uh, Epoxy. And uh, I'll be co-presenting this morning with uh, Brent Collier, who's a VP Engineering uh, for Leaf Springs and R&D Director for Lightweighting uh, at uh, Rossini International. So uh, I'm going to give the first part of the presentation, then I'm going to hand over the reins to, uh, to Mr. Collier. So let's jump in. Uh, first, uh, a quick uh, introduction about uh, who Westlake Epoxy is. Uh, up until very recently, we were uh, known as uh, Hexion Coatings and Composites. We are now uh, Westlake uh, Epoxy as of uh, earlier this year. A quick bit about uh, Westlake. Uh, so Westlake was established in 1986. Uh, we're headquartered in, in Houston, Texas. We have around 16,000 uh, employees globally. Uh, we're in 23 uh, countries and have manufacturing in 13 countries. And you can see uh, off to the right there some of the product groups we work with and some of the applications and industries uh, that we work in. In terms of organization, Westlake is broken up into two main divisions, uh, housing and infrastructure uh, uh, products, and then performance and essential materials. And you'll see Westlake epoxy is nested under the ladder. And very quickly, uh, so Westlake Epoxy, uh, you know, formerly uh, Hexion, we're a global leading uh, epoxy supplier supporting a, a continued legacy growth in composites. Our history goes back more than 100 years to some uh, uh, company names you're probably familiar with, uh, Borden Chemical, uh, Bakelite, and, and Shell Chemicals. So I'm gonna jump, because uh, we've got a lot of material to cover, I'm gonna jump straight into, for introduction purposes, some application examples. And the first here is actually uh, related to Rossini, uh, the company, my, my co-presenter. Uh, this is an example of, of state-of-the-art HPRTM technology. It's the, the helper spring on the, uh, the F-150 uh, vehicle produced by Ford Motor Company. And uh, this is a great example of the state-of-the-art of HPRTM. It's, it's more than a million parts a year being produced using the technology, providing significant weight savings to the vehicle and uh, performance increases and, and even ride performance and, and noise reduction, corrosion resistance, and, a, and actually a longer uh, fatigue life. And that's using Hexion 6150 resin system, along with our 6720-3 uh, binder and uh, a black pigment called 6150 black. Another current example, uh, this is a mix of HPRTM and, and liquid compression molding. You've maybe seen us present on this before. A long-standing application, which is the BMW 7 series, um, and, and uh, Westlake's uh, Epicoat and Epicure resins, this time our 6000 series products, are used in this application for a number of different carbon fiber components that are built into the body in white, contributing to significant weight savings over the previous generation vehicle uh, and, and improving uh, not just uh, from a light weighting perspective but also from a, a structural and safety perspective. And the last a quick example is, is uh, just an, an LCM application, this one also a carbon fiber based. This is the uh, the structural floor for the battery in the Neo uh, ES6 vehicle. And this is a great example, again, of the use of the right material, right manufacturing process in a multi-material solution. So you see that component that's, that's nested into the a metallic chassis uh, on that vehicle. So for those that are in the audience here that aren't familiar with HPRTM or with, with LCM, we talk about these technologies as being sister or complementary technologies. Um, there are a number of similarities and differences, and, and to not take up too much time on that, I'll just talk firstly about the, the similarities. So you're really talking about using the same kinds of, of resin systems, the same types of reinforcements, whether glass fiber or carbon fiber, uh, and you're talking about the same kinds of presses, mixing and dosing equipment, and that's really where the similarities end. In terms of process, with HPRTM, you're actually first creating a dry uh, fiber preform. So before you've molded it, with binder stabilization, you're creating in the first set of, of tools a stable preform. And that preform is then transferred into the molding tool, you're closing the tool, and then under heat and pressure, you're, you're injecting and curing the part. In the case of LCM, again, same materials uh, for the most part, but in this case, you're dealing with a flat fiber stack, uh, non-binder stabilized in most cases, and you're introducing the resin by just pouring it on top, either in situ in the press or, or outside of the press transferring that into the press, and then you're doing the drape and the impregnation of the resin uh, in a single stage. So you can see the, the most stark contrast there is the, the, the lack of preforming with liquid compression molding. So process 
selection criteria for uh, the two technologies, these sister technologies. I won't go into the details here, but um, some of those points on the right, you know, part geometry, uh, part complexity, layup complexity, these are all things that will uh, drive whether or not you're looking at, at HPRTM or at LCM. In terms of, of materials from Westlake, we have a broad portfolio of, of products that are used for LCM and for HPRTM today. Two products, the 6150 system I referenced already that's being used by, by Rossini, um, and then 6170, which is a faster curing system that's allowing for uh, the curing of liquid compression molding components in less than 90 seconds uh, for you know, high volume applications. Um, but within the portfolio of products, we're really able to cover all the bases in terms of thin to thick laminates, large to small format parts, large footprint parts, and uh, a variety of geometric complexities. And in terms of, this is my last slide before I transition over to, uh, over to Brent, um, the, the areas of application where we see a lot of growth right now, we've seen a, a, a trend away from carbon fiber reinforcement to more and more glass fiber reinforcement, meaning continuous fiber, a glass fiber. And uh, as with so many others, we're seeing a trend towards uh, a focus on EV applications in two areas in particular where we see a good fit for uh, the, uh, the HPRTM and particularly the LCM format. Uh, one is underbody, so where you're talking about discrete underbody protection for uh, electric vehicles to protect the and act as a first line of defense for the battery enclosure. And then uh, on the other side, directly for the battery enclosure, primarily for a structural tray where the, the continuous fiber reinforcement is, is a great uh, material format for a multi-material battery enclosure solution. But it's not limited to, to trays. We also see uh, OEMs and tiers uh, working hard at, at, at uh, the use of LCM and continuous fiber reinforcement for uh, covers as well. And so with that, I'm going to hand the reins over to, uh, to Brent. So rule number one that I've learned getting into the composite business, pick great partners, and Steve and Hexion now, Westlake uh, Epoxy, have been a great partner for us. Um, I'm Brent Collier, VP of Engineering and uh, Director of Light Weighting at Rossini. So what, what is Rossini? What's Rossini doing here at the composite uh, uh, show? Rossini's 6,600 employees worldwide. We have uh, seven plants, four operating divisions. Uh, we are the largest leaf spring manufacturer in the world. Uh, we are also the largest vertically integrated uh, brake rotor manufacturer in North America. Um, we also do coil springs. We're experts in hot coiling springs, and which are for heavier vehicles. And by the way, these BEV vehicles or battery electric vehicles are getting quite heavy, so it's very interesting for our coil business. And then we do elastomer products as well. They're complementary to our suspension group uh, type pivot joints that need to move, uh, as well as steering systems for our customers. But as you can see, our portfolio is primarily steel. We're a steel value-add manufacturer. Now, with this new exciting product, we've made a multi-material approach to our leaf springs. We've basically taken what would be traditionally an all-steel leaf spring, and we've lightweighted it, not just with the steel side of it, but also we've done a, a substitution material with a glass fiber reinforced plastic part. So the, the, the top leaf there that's arched is a high strength parabolically produced uh, steel spring. And then underneath it, we call it a helper spring, which engages as the vehicle is loaded or goes through large articulations in the suspension. Um, it looks really robust when you look at it. That, that helper is about 1.7 times thicker than a traditional steel helper. And the reason is, is the modulus of elasticity of composites is much less than steel. So to have the same performance on the spring rate, we have to make it thicker. But it's 53% lighter, right? So even though it's thicker and it looks more robust, it's actually much lighter than the steel equivalent. Um, we've been recognized, this launched last year on the Ford F-150, the highest volume platform in the world, actually, uh, obviously in North America. Um, and we've been recognized multiple times over for, for this technology. Uh, this is an example, one of the awards that we received from Altair for the en Enlightenment. And then I'm going to show you a quick video of our HPRTM. Uh, we think is the, you know, in North America, it's, it's the first of its kind. It's a fully automated system. I hope you enjoy the video.
Okay, so with that investment that we have, it's in Piedras Negras, Mexico, which is just on the border to, with Texas and the United States, like, I mean, literally a stone throw away from the border. Uh, we're the largest HPRTM manufacturer in North America. So just with that one project, uh, almost a million springs a year that we're producing off that technology, we've gone from a traditional steel manufacturer to now the largest HPRTM manufacturer in North America. So with this investment, what's really interesting for us is this goes beyond leaf springs for us. The assets that we now have, the facility that we now have, we don't have to just make leaf springs on it, right? There's other exciting technologies and potentials that we could do. And so we started looking at, hey, there's a lot of these BEVs coming out in the market. What about battery enclosure type parts? So we benchmarked some of the leadership that's in the market in, in North America. Um, and we looked at the top covers and the bottom trays being excellent opportunities to lightweight. We came up with our own design approach in this case for the bottom tray and decided to make you know, some demonstrator parts out of it, which we would intend to do liquid or wet compression molding in a production environment. Obviously for prototyping, you know, vacuum infusion is a very acceptable way to produce these parts. Um, and so we ended up making these with uh, Hexion's resin system and then several different configurations of glass and carbon fiber to see what, see what we could do with it. Um, we, even, it, we even put a stiffening rib in it to see it doesn't necessarily need it, but what, what can we do with this that could be in production liquid or, or wet compression molded? We also looked at uh, uh, B-pillar reinforcement parts. That's another great opportunity, another structural member. Um, again, and this was done in a, in a liquid compression mold part. We can do it on the same presses that we use for HPRTM, can also be used. They're complementary for wet or liquid compression molding as well. And here's some of the parts that we made off it. And again, these are demonstrator parts that we take into our customers and try to you know, sell the technologies, show them the value add. And with that, that's the end of my presentation and Steve's presentation. I'm not sure how our time is. We got lots of time if we want to do questions. So uh, Steve, do you want to come back and take some questions, if there is any questions? No questions, okay. Thank you very much for your time today. Enjoy the show.